Good morning. In this deeply sorrowful time of loss, I find comfort in being here today with so many loved ones and those who are so lucky to have shared John's warmth and love. I want to begin by thanking the Lewis family. Thank you so much for sharing John with the world. Thank you for accompanying John to Selma one last time. But even more importantly, thank you for sharing him over and over again. Our nation is better off because of John Robert Lewis. My life is better. Selma is better. This nation and this world are better because of John Robert Lewis. So thank you, family. Thank you to his dedicated staff. Thank you to all those who love John. John's love was unique and all-encompassing. It was powerful. You felt it radiate. I miss him dearly, but we are so deeply blessed to have touched, been touched by his greatness. He will forever change Selma and this nation. On Bloody Sunday in 1965, John was confronted by Alabama State Troopers and their dogs. They beat him with billy clubs, fracturing his skull. But John was determined to fight for equality and justice, putting his own life on the line in the service of others and a brighter future for everyone. John crossed bridges so many times insisting that our nation live up to the ideals upon which it was founded. As he always said, he gave a little blood on that bridge. As always, John was humble. His humility rang true. As he takes his final march, that final crossing, John bridged the gaps that so often divided us our political parties working every day for a more just and equitable America. My heart is full knowing that John is crossing that Selma Bridge today in his final march. His final march, that final crossing, so different from the first, speaks to the legacy that he leaves behind and the lives that he has changed. It's poetic justice that this time, Alabama State Troopers will see John to his safety. They will accompany him on his last trip over the Selma Bridge and on to Montgomery, where he will lie in state at the Capitol. John has left this earth, but his legacy remains on, on. And we continue to benefit from his life's work. He's laid out the blueprint for us to pick up the baton and continue his march. For human rights, for civil, for civil rights, for human rights. John believed firmly that the best days lie ahead of us. I hope his passing causes us to rededicate ourselves to getting into good trouble, necessary trouble. Can't you hear him? Never give up, give up, never give in. Keep the faith, keep your eyes on the prize. For our nation, 
Let's make him proud. Let's make him proud. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome gospel recording artist, Kristen Glover. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. And I, I am worn through the storm and through, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on when my way grows drear, precious Lord. God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in thy path, we pray. Most gracious Father, we come before your presence this morning, reverencing you as our God, understanding that it is you who have made us and not we ourselves that we are the sheep of your pasture, and it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. We thank you for this day. We thank you for life and another opportunity to serve you this day and live out your purposes in the world. We thank you, Lord, for this occasion as we have assembled ourselves here to give thanks to you for a life well lived. Thank you for Congressman John Lewis. Thank you, Father, for his legacy. His legacy of being a freedom fighter. His legacy of being a foot soldier for justice. The legacy of being a servant of humanity. As he walked humbly with you, and as he always remembered his roots and always a strive or strive, strive so that this world could be a better place, a more equitable world, a world that is more just and more righteous. 
Thank you for his service to humanity. Thank you, Lord, that he was willing to get in the way. Thank you that he was willing to stir good trouble. Thank you for his voice, the voice that will resonate in our hearts and minds for years and generations to come. Thank you for his message. Thank you, Lord, for using him for such a time as this to bridge divides and help us become a more perfect union. I pray this morning for his family. I pray, Lord, that you will comfort them as only you can, that you will undergird them with your strength and grant them your grace. I pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts and their minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. And Lord, I pray that we who are still remaining, who still have blood running warm in our veins, that we too will stand for justice, that we will stand for righteousness, that we will lift our voices for you, lift our voices for the cause that is just and right. Until we hear your welcome voice, say well done, good and faithful servant. As Congressman Lewis crosses the Alabama River, we rejoice today knowing that he's already crossed the Jordan River and he's now resting in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the structured program, but we just have a few notes that we need to give everyone. First and foremost, if we can just show some appreciation to the Congresswoman for helping to put this a, wonderful uh, a program short, together. Uh, a short ceremony, and in a moment, the processional the will begin carrying uh, John Lewis's body uh, from the Brown Chapel to the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Uh, that we understand so, has now been adorned with uh, rose petals. I want to go to Blaine Alexander right now, who is at the foot of the bridge. Blaine. Yeah, Lester, six days of tributes. Undoubtedly, this will be certainly one of the most emotional. We expect to see that processional snake up this street any minute from now, watching him come to the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge and cross for the final time. You know, we see two floral arrangements here, but the path that he's going to take, his final path, has been adorned with rose petals. The other thing that we see out here is while these streets are clear, we see dozens, hundreds of people who have lined the streets coming to pay their final respects. People who knew the Congressman personally, who worked with him, perhaps even a few people who were fellow foot soldiers who were there with him on that day 55 years ago here in Selma, Alabama on Bloody Sunday. We've also run into more people who just didn't know him at all, but just wanted to be here for this moment, Lester. In fact, I talked with a family who came up from Florida because they said they just had to be here for this. So a lot of symbolism he's going to be drawn across uh, in something resembling what Dr. King was carried on uh, during his funeral 52 years ago. But I think what really will be one of the more touching aspects of this, Lester, is what awaits him on the other side of that bridge. We're going to see a gathering of Alabama state troopers there standing at attention, ready to salute the fallen congressman. Of course, Lester, it was Alabama state troopers that nearly killed him on this bridge 55 years ago. Now they're going to be there lining that area, honoring him as he passes for the final time. Lester. Yeah, a day rich in symbolism and history. All right, Blaine Alexander, thanks. And we saw some of the folks uh, wearing T-shirts saying uh, good trouble, a phrase that uh, Congressman Lewis uh, embraced. Andrea Mitchell, uh, can you talk about the good trouble that really defined uh, his life? Well, the good trouble was fighting for voting rights, fighting for civil rights, fighting for human rights, and doing it with such courage. That's what really set him apart. In talking to some of his former colleagues and those found and joined the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, what made him the leader of that committee, of that very important group, what 
made him the leader of that committee, of that very important group in those days. And the Freedom Riders was not his size, not his stature, not even his eloquence at that young age, but his courage. He had the raw courage on those buses with the Freedom Riders in 1961 to face lots of trouble and make good trouble, but also to be beaten and uh, almost died several times. He was arrested, uh, as he used to recount, at least 40 times during those years. And it was to always call people to their higher, uh, higher values, to remind people of the purpose and the goal, to keep their eye on the prize, as, as of course, uh, Congresswoman Sewell, his great friend there in Selma, uh, recounted just, just now in her comments at Brown Chapel. Brown Chapel was their retreat, was their um, organizing place. It's where they went to be to be bandaged uh, after these confrontations. Brown Chapel was a, a major headquarters for SNCC and for the others, for Dr. King, as they led the march and in other, other protests there in Selma before they got to Montgomery uh, and finally you know, did the rest, of, uh, the rest of the challenge for freedom, for voting rights, and for civil rights. So, he, and he did it most recently, he did it all his life. Certainly the Edwin Pettus Bridge animated his life, and he brought members of Congress every year on the anniversary, bipartisan. You can see in some of the pictures Mike Pence standing behind him and other you know, Republican leaders, so that while they voted against the voting rights amendments that he wanted, they still honored at least that much, and he was trying to communicate and trying to persuade them to join the cause and to actually vote where they, with their speech. They have, of course, honored him in, uh, after his death, but have still not voted to restore the aspects of the voting rights law that were overturned by the Supreme Court in 2013. Uh, and most recently, I think, what was so remarkable was his gun rights leadership as well. Uh, not just those final moments with Black Lives Matter in Washington that we saw just last month, but also when he staged that unprecedented sit-in on the House floor and for more than 24 hours, they stayed on the House floor demanding a vote on gun reform and on, on gun control or reform after uh, you know, the, the, the nightclub outrage in Florida. So he, he, kept, he kept rejuvenating his causes as times changed. And that was, I think, what made him such a leader. It's great to have you along with us uh, today, Andrea. Thanks. We want to uh, let folks know that uh, brief ceremony at the Brown Chapel has uh, concluded. We're waiting for the processional to begin. It's a fairly um, short distance, maybe a half mile uh, walk, just a few minute walk from the chapel to the bridge itself. And they should be getting underway here very shortly. We'll keep our eye on that. I also want to bring into our coverage uh, Martin Luther King III, eldest son of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, Martin, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, we, we talked about it. We will talk about uh, across this coming week, just the powerful symbolism of every moment, not only um, those Alabama state troopers that will now accompany him and greet him uh, crossing the bridge. But just this this intersection of history with the Black Lives Matter movement, this uh, reinvigorated call uh, for racial and social justice. I want to get your thoughts on how we will the, the prism through which we will view this week. Well, um, Congressman Lewis has consistently marched his march. And actually, he and C.T. Vivian had their last march together on last Friday. On this day and during this time, as we are really engaging in what often is called a homegoing service, uh, it is to say thank you, but it is also uh, to, to become re-engaged because what he was able to see was the largest civil and human rights demonstrations in the world taking place right now. And when he and others were marching, there were demonstrations, but there's never been demonstrations like we're seeing right now. Um, that 
All right, I want to bring in uh, Martin. Thanks if you'll stay with us. All right, I want to bring in uh, Martin. Thanks if you'll stay with us uh, for this coverage as we wait uh, for the processional to begin. I do want to bring in Washington Post associate editor and columnist and NBC News contributor Eugene Robinson. Uh, Eugene, um, John Lewis often referred to as the conscience of the Congress. How critical is it to lose that voice in Congress, especially right now? I think it's a devastating loss for Congress and would be at, at any moment because that that is what he was. People knew of his of, of his history, of his struggles, of his of his suffering. Um, you know, it, it's um, it's it, we tend to think of him. I think many Americans think of him in that latter period of his life when he was a senior member of Congress and and acclaimed by the um, really by the nation as a um, and and we forget um, how how radical he was in his early days and how and forget um, how how radical he was in his early days and how insistent how how implacably committed to nonviolence, which was an incredibly difficult path because it, it, it involved walking into danger, knowing you were going to be physically attacked, and, and being resolved not to fight back. It was the, the, the Gandhian um, strategy that, um, that he believed in with all his heart. But he was also uh, impatient, uh, and he was fiery, and he saw the injustices of, of, of of that time, uh, and and he was in no mood for patience. Um, there was um, uh, Bruja among the march organizers over his speech and whether he would be uh, Bruja among the march organizers over his speech and whether he would be able to say the time is over for patience. We we are not in pain. We want our freedom now. Um, so I. I hope we remember, as as we remember his life, we remember the arc of his life. He challenged authority. He defied unjust law. Um, uh, he 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 marched, um, uh, and that, that bridge was was a, a moment that no one will ever forget. But but his whole life was a struggle uh, for freedom and justice, and and we should. Keep that in mind if we watch these uh, these incredible events unfold over the next few days. All right, Eugene, good to have you with us as well as we uh, watch the honor guards now about to receive uh, the casket of uh, Congressman Lewis. We had a brief shot of the bridge itself and the caisson pulling into position that will uh, carry his uh, his body across uh, the Edmund Pettus Bridge. We'll watch.
Five side steps. March. Session has begun, and as we noted, uh, it's just about a half mile from the chapel uh, to the Edmund Pettus Bridge, and there is a crowd gathered along the way there, um, as we will see in virtually every moment of this uh, week-long tribute. And as we see throughout society right now, there will be uh, measures to to create social distancing in the age of pandemic. Uh, but there will be people along the way to uh, to pay their respects to Congressman Lewis as his uh, body now on that caisson, uh, making its way to the bridge, and ultimately uh, uh, he will uh, he will be taken to Montgomery, which was of course the destination 55 years ago uh, when he led a group of. Uh, of 600 marchers and uh, were, were met with that bloody crackdown um, by state police and 55 years later state police will be greeting him as he uh, crosses the bridge and you can see there in the roadway the uh, the, the flower petals, the rose petals. Blaine Alexander is a, is at the foot of the bridge. Uh, uh, Blaine, uh, can you describe who's there and, and what the what the atmosphere is? 
Well, Lester, the atmosphere is one of reverence right now. We see people that have signs, people that say that they really are coming to pay their final respects. So many people out here that I spoke to did not know the congressman personally, Lester. They said that they're just out here because they want to be part of the moment and because of what he means to them. So people coming out here bracing for an emotional moment. You know, I do have to say that it's very striking, though, just how much of a role Selma played and continued to play in his life. Certainly, we talk about that day 55 years ago, but what we also know is that Congressman Lewis came back and kept coming back and kept returning to Selma every year almost to commemorate the anniversary of Bloody Sunday. In fact, he was even here four months ago as he battled cancer. He was right here at the foot of this bridge speaking to people, encouraging people, kind of firing up the crowd uh, for his final, what would be his final appearance here at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. So for what we've seen throughout the morning, Lester, we have seen uh, songs. We've heard songs of the movement. People in the crowd just kind of striking up uh, renditions of We Shall Overcome or Precious Lord, different songs that certainly have so much meaning, so much history when you talk about their context in the civil rights movement. And even as I look ahead, Lester, you can see really crowds as far as the eye can see, just people lined up waiting to pay their respects. You know, we do know that uh, there are certainly rose petals that are lining this, but it's notable that he's going to be crossing on the left side of the street, the wrong side of the street, perhaps a nod to his uh, his desire to always get into good trouble and then come to an end on the other side of this Edmund Pettus Bridge. Lester. All right, uh, Blaine, thanks very much. Let me bring in John Meacham, if I can, an NBC News contributor. John has written a new book on Lewis that uh, is coming out very shortly called His Truth is Marching On, John Lewis and the Power of Hope. Uh, John, as, as you watch this, it's, it's hard to think that he could ever have imagined that uh, 55 years later uh, he would be welcomed to this site and honored at this site. This is a war memorial in many ways, Lester. This is, we talk about Lexington and Concord, we talk about Gettysburg, we talk an American battlefield. And it was a battlefield for justice and for equality, an American battlefield. And it was a battlefield for justice and for equality and for grace and for harmony. And John Lewis on March 7th, 1965, the first time he went across that bridge, you know what he had in his backpack were an apple, two books, and a toothbrush. Because when you'd been arrested as many times as he had, you knew you needed something to read in jail, something to eat, and a way to clean your teeth. He was prepared at every point to be arrested, to be beaten, and most important, to die. He's there on a Sunday morning now. He meets the classical definition, this is not sentimental, this is pure history and theology, the classical definition of a saint. It doesn't mean he's perfect, but he was a sinner who was willing to die for the implications of the gospel. He heard the Sermon on the Mount as a young man in Troy, Alabama, not far from Selma. He preached to those chickens uh, in the mornings uh, out on the farm. And he opened himself up to a phrase that I believe he coined, or it came out of the movement, the spirit of history. And the spirit of history was a place where the belief in God and love and harmony was able to intersect with the temporal fallen nature of history to push history and heaven into closer harmony. That's what that trip across the bridge was. And in a country where we are far more inclined, because we're human beings, to pull up bridges, John Lewis always went across them. And so as people watch this moment, I would humbly submit that they're watching a hero of America, a combat veteran who stood as surely and as bravely as any soldier ever did under enemy fire in order to summon us to actually live up to what we said we wanted to be in the Declaration of Independence. John, thank you. Uh, good to have you along with us. Let me go back to, to Martin Luther King III. Uh, Martin, as we wait for the caisson to, to come into view and for the crossing of the bridge itself, can you reflect on 
the importance of this bridge, the importance of, of that march, which was, a, if you will, a bridge too far at first, but ultimately it, it, it took place? Uh, certainly. Um, the bridge represented obviously what a bridge initially represents, which is an opportunity to cross over. But for black and poor people, because of segregation, uh, and let me let me add, you know, John Lewis, we all know, was a nonviolent warrior. He was a, a practitioner and understood that we must create the climate where we don't destroy the personal property. And so today, as we watch him take this last march, I know that it will be maybe changed, in fact, a great honor to out the Edmund Pettus, but the John Lewis Memorial Bridge. And this is, his, is the, the final walk. Uh, it's, um, in one sense, it's very emotional uh, to live with God. And so many young people will be inspired because that's what he always, he always had time to see young people will be inspired because that's what he always, he always had time to say something to the young people. I never saw him when he didn't pass by young people and stop and try to provide inspiration to tell him, to tell Gibeon not to give up and certainly not to give out. And he demonstrated that with his life. And so this is uh, it's a sad on one hand occasion, but it's going to be a wonderful occasion in the sense that he is joining my father and mother. He's joining Amelia Boynton. He's joining Marie Foster. He's joining Dr. Abernathy and Mrs. Abernathy, Hosea Williams. Uh, and the list goes on and on of those. There's probably a great reunion going on right about now, and particularly as his body will be coming over the bridge, a great reunion. And of, of course, uh, in the same day, we lost uh, one of the field generals of your, of your, your father's movement, uh, C.T. Vivian. The Lewis family showed some deference and some respect as, as that family and the country was able to mourn his death uh, before publishing the, the schedule of, of, of what we're seeing here today. Uh, how devastating a loss to, to lose both of these men at the same time. Well, it certainly was beyond devastating, but how I see it is they took their last march together. Uh, it couldn't have perhaps been no more poetic because both of them were working around, but he still got back up and said, we are here because we are going to register. But he still got back up and said, we are here because we are going to register to vote. Um, he dedicated his life in a similar way, uh, although John Lewis was able to matriculate through Congress, get the legislation, be the personification of what it means to be able to vote. But uh, it is, it's, it's, it's again, tragic and sad, but these men have marched their march. It is now our time to march our march, as well as young people to transform this nation and perhaps even our world. And because of these massive civil rights demonstrations, I'm sure that although there were, there's been a lot of difficulty, I'm sure that John Lewis and C.T. Vivian were smiling as they were realizing that we're in the midst of the largest civil rights demonstrations on our planet. And we're going to get to what some may call the promised land. My dad talked about the promised land. We're going to get there. We still got a long way to go, but we're going to get there. All right, let me bring in uh, Yamiche Alcindor, the White House correspondent for PBS NewsHour and an NBC News political contributor. Uh, Yamiche, always good to have you along. Um, let, let's pick up on what uh, what Martin was talking about. The a new generation now is 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 carrying this march, if you will, for uh, racial justice. But we did get to hear. Uh, the congressman talk about Black Lives Movement before the loss. How 
How critical was it that he was able to, to see this movement, get this new breath of life, and to comment on it? It was critical for Representative Lewis to be able to talk about this new generation of civil rights leaders who are coming up in his shadow, coming up, seeing the things that he was able to accomplish and pushing forward past the goals that he had for this nation to going even farther. I think John Lewis, in some ways, as much as he's an American hero, as much as he's a civil rights icon, he's also in some ways a founder of this country. Yes, he didn't sign the civil rights um, legislation. Yes, he didn't with the person that signed the Constitution or signed the Declaration of Independence. But what he did do was push the country to believe in those ideals, to have the action to put forth the, the behaviors and the legislation to actually allow people to be treated equally. When you think about what he gave on this bridge, he gave a sort of blood to this movement that young people are now seeing and saying, I will also put my body on the line in order to demand justice. He talked, of course, about good trouble. And he was someone, as someone who covered him for a long time in in, on the Capitol Hill. What Martin was saying is so true. He would stop and talk to young people and say, keep on fighting, keep on going. Don't be worried about people saying that maybe you're being too radical or maybe you're pushing too far. Keep pushing for all the things that you think you are owed. So in the Black Lives Matter movement, he, of course, aligned himself with that movement. He had sit-ins in that movement. He was arrested, really humble, but also someone who was training up the next generation. If he saw someone who was worried or saw someone, also someone who was training up the next generation, if he saw someone who was worried or saw someone who was nervous about what to do next, he was someone who would lend his voice to that. And that's something that I will always remember about him, walking, seeing him walk in the halls of Congress and stopping and talking to people. Now, as we see this national reckoning that's happening, he would be someone who would continue to say, go forward. He was also someone who understood that the civil rights movement did not stop and transforms itself over and over again. And he was someone that was pushing the country as a whole to say, continue to fight that mutation, whatever. And, and he was someone that was pushing the country as a whole to say, continue to fight that mutation, whatever racism, whatever form racism takes, continue to right. look at it dead in the face and tell America that it has its flaws. Yeah, this is a, we are certainly symbolically watching the uh, passing of a torch. Uh, Yamish, let me bring in NBC's Blaine Alexander at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. We're looking at a, a wide shot right now. Is, is the case on in view from where you are? Lester, not quite in view just yet, but what we did see was a procession pass by uh, about three very large buses. I'm told that those were carrying family members of the congressman across the bridge, followed by a number of independent cars. We saw that processional stop there at the top of the bridge and then continue on, and the bridge now as it stands is empty. We're waiting for that caisson to come into view, though. As we look, there are a couple of blocks ahead, I would say, that the road is blocked off, so we expect to see it turn the corner and come into view any moment now. But I will say that in the past few minutes, what's been interesting Interesting, Lester, is that as we started to see movement here, as we started to see uh, cars process by, those buses process by, we saw this kind of hush fall over the crowd. I talked earlier about that chatter, this kind of feeling of songs and different things. We've seen that mood change now, and it's kind of gone to a more somber, a more quiet tone, a lot less chatter out here as people are waiting. One other thing that I will mention is that as those buses pass by, we saw people waving uh, off the buses, and we saw many of the people that were waiting here in the crowds waving back at them. So there really is this kind of family feeling aspect for so many people who are out here who say that they wanted to come. They wanted to pay tribute to the fallen Congressman Lester. All right, Blaine, thanks very much. Let me bring uh, back uh, Andrea Mitchell. Uh, Andrea, I can't help looking at these pictures, thinking back to the 50th anniversary uh, when Congressman Lewis, Barack Obama, uh, President Bush uh, made the march across this bridge. And that, that was such a remarkable moment. And that was signifying how he united the political parties, certainly in the leadership, at least before now, because he had such a contentious relationship. Remember, he did not go to the Trump inaugural. He was one of the few members of Congress who spoke out against Donald Trump before he was even sworn into office. Uh, he did not forgive or forget the, uh, the whole birther movement. As you see this happening, though, this is such a significant difference from 55 years ago. Remember, they had been told not to cross the bridge, and then they asked if they could kneel when the troopers tried to stop them. They asked if they could kneel and pray. And that's at the moment when they started, uh, when the troopers attacked and his skull was cracked. 
and he was eventually saved by one of his colleagues and brought to the hospital, as was recounted last night at Brown Chapel in the memorial service. So uh, it was just mayhem and brutality from the officials. And now, of course, as Blaine said, that we're going to see the troopers significantly greeting him on the other side of the bridge when the caisson crosses over. Uh, this, the honor that is being accorded to him, is so befitting of, as has been described today, his leadership. Uh, he was an iconic figure, and I don't think the movement could have ever reached the heights in Congress that has reached without his leadership, without his voice. Yeah, and as you, uh, as we, as we watch this moment, uh, obviously on television, cameras were reminded that 55 years ago it was the it was the power of television capturing those those moments of violence, those uh, marchers being beaten down, that really pricked the consciousness of the nation, and uh, and certainly sped uh, the, uh, the the passage of the Voting Rights Act just a, a mere five months or so later. Um, but you saw the, the uh, caisson uh, carrying the casket of Congressman John Lewis. You see the crowd now uh, waiting to greet and, and pay their last respects uh, before uh, he's carried across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which uh, was such a powerful symbol in the civil rights movement, but a powerful uh, moment and a symbol in, in Congressman John Lewis's life. Um, certainly, uh, he had been roughed up before that moment. Uh, he had been arrested many times before that moment. Uh, but what happened on that bridge and how Americans watched it and digested it and, and understood in, in ways perhaps they hadn't before of the, the call for racial justice and, and the meaning of all this, um, certainly it all historically points back to this one site, Selma, Alabama, and uh, that, that march uh, ultimately did carry uh, Lewis and members of the movement uh, to Montgomery, the, the state capital, and that is where he will uh, lie in state uh, later on at the capital uh, in Alabama. John Meacham, uh, do you want to weigh in here um, as this, as we watch the uh, the congressman's body approach the bridge? Yeah, uh, two things come to mind, uh, Lester. One is, if you haven't been there, it, it, I don't know if the images quite convey it. That's a very steep bridge. Uh, the waters of the Alabama River are silent and brown and swirling, and so this is not just a little. Uh, quick hop over uh, a creek. Uh, this is a big, tall bridge. Uh, one of the things that uh, John Lewis said to Hosea Williams, who led the, led the march with him, uh, with so many others, Amelia Boynton and Charles Malden and, and so many others, was when they got to the top and they saw what John would describe as a sea of blue of the troopers and the posse men, he turned to Hosea and said, can you swim? And Lewis said, no, can you? He said, no, but we may have to. But they kept going. And they marched straight into the fires of history at that moment. And this isn't overly grand, right? This is, this is in the lifetime of so many of us who are here. This is a man being taken back. This is like Eisenhower going to Normandy in 1964 with Walter Cronkite to walk those beaches. It's that significant in the American story. And when you think about the heroic humility of, of John Lewis, it's incredibly moving. And one of the points of faith, one of the points of history, is that we find stories that illuminate and inspire. His illuminates and inspires and is absolutely true and all happened the day before yesterday. It's a reminder that the state of Alabama, and I grew up in a neighboring state, was largely a totalitarian police state when it came to this, these moments. And the fact that John Lewis, who led the battle against that police state, is on his way to Montgomery to lie in state in the Capitol where George Wallace presided and where Jefferson Davis became the president of the Confederate States of America, 
tells you something about the complexity of the American story. And one final point in our own time. Think about who we're honoring today. Think about who is coming across that bridge. It's not the sheriff. It's not the posse man. It's not the people who fought against fairness and equality and justice. It's John Lewis who fought for it. And so what, what Congressman Lewis would insist on is we have the choice. We have the choice. Do we cross a bridge on the right side of history or do we try to keep our fists clenched and our hearts closed? And my, my point would be look who history honors and choose which side you want to be on. We are watching the uh, case on now uh, nearing the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. You can see the crowds lined on, on both sides of the street there, uh, smatterings of applause as the uh, casket is wheeled by. Let the camera settle down there again, but uh, you can clearly see the bridge in sight. Blaine Alexander, what are you seeing in the crowd? Yeah, you know what, as soon as that case came into view, Lester, it was kind of a moving moment. This crowd behind me just started singing a stirring rendition of, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom, as soon as that came into view. And they've been singing as it's been slowly, reverently making its way up the street here right now. It's almost here at the foot of the bridge. You see two horses, of course, that gasket draped in the American flag, and then two gentlemen uh, steering that right now. But yes, amongst the crowd, aside from that, sound of people singing aside from those people singing again you're seeing that silence that reverence of people just uh, pointing their camera phones pausing to take a breath but not a lot of sound along for, aside from that uh, singing here behind me Lester oh. an important anthem from the movement as the uh as the caisson now pauses at the uh, at the foot of the bridge. This is an NBC News special report. Remembering John Lewis. Here's Lester Holt. And welcome to those who are just joining us for live coverage of the final journey of the late congressman and civil rights icon, John Lewis, today in Selma, Alabama. Lewis's body about to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge one last time. The same bridge Lewis and hundreds of civil rights marchers crossed 55 years ago, calling for voting rights when they were brutally attacked by state troopers. A very different scene, as you can see, in Selma today. Rose petals covering the bridge.
Those are members of the Lewis family who are walking behind the caisson. And on the other end of this bridge, Alabama State Police who will receive and, and, and greet the congressman's casket. My hands up. What? My hands up. You got me. Don't, please. The journey John Lewis began 55 years ago to cross this bridge, of course, was cut short uh, on that day uh, as they were greeted by state police who beat down uh, those marchers, including John Lewis. But that journey completed today. Uh, the family you'll see uh, wearing T-shirts, good trouble, that kind of defined uh, John Lewis's uh, approach to activism, what he called good trouble. 
he will uh, he will be carried to uh, Montgomery, which he was unable to do 55 years ago. That concludes this uh, portion of our coverage. I'm Lester Holt. For most of you now, we return to NBC Sports coverage of Premier League Soccer Championship Sunday. And we continue our coverage for the rest of you uh, watching us on streaming right now. And the, uh, a pause now at the other side of the bridge. Uh, the uh, casket uh, carrying John, Congressman John Lewis has now made its journey across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, across above the uh, Alabama River. On this side, uh, members of the state police uh, position to welcome uh, the case on and, and the processional, of course, a very different story uh, the first time that uh, uh, Congressman Lewis, uh, then a young activist, led a group of 600 marchers to try and cross this bridge to get to Montgomery, Alabama, the state capital, uh, to protest and to make an appeal for voting rights. Uh, and we're seeing them pause at various points along the way, roses being laid in the path. Let me bring it, if I can, uh, Eugene Robinson, a Washington Post columnist and NBC News political analyst. Um, you know, we talk about um, the moral courage of, of Congressman Lewis, and which, which seems to be something we, we crave more and more right now uh, from our leaders. Uh, how, how will that be, be framed in these coming days? I think we will remember his moral courage. We will remember his physical courage. Uh, you know, as I watched um, those very, very moving last few moments as um, the case on was brought across the bridge, I, <coughs> I thought we, we saw them cross on the roadway, you know, on that day, on March 7th, 1965, um, the, the marchers actually stayed to the sidewalk of the, of the bridge because um, uh, Governor George Wallace, who had campaigned on a, on a platform of segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever, uh, had said he would forbid any such sidewalk so they could not be accused of disrupting traffic. And there on, in the front row, um, were, were not be accused of disrupting traffic. And there on, in the front row um, were, were John Lewis and Hosea Williams from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, um, just showing unimaginable bravery because they knew um, what awaited them on the other side. Uh, and as they were um, savagely, savagely beaten uh, when they got to the other side, where today the congressman is being saluted, where then uh, the, the marchers were trampled and, and clubbed and beaten. Um, uh, Lewis's skull was cracked. Um, a woman named Amelia Boynton um, was beaten unconscious, unconscious, and actually with a photo of, of Amelia Boynton that sort of went nationwide. It was really one of the, um, one of the images that shocked and riveted the nation and uh, and made this such a turning point, such as John Meacham said, such a such a, a sacred battlefield um, uh, in the in the struggle for human rights uh, and civil rights in this country. Um, and you 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 look at John Lewis and you always think of 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 all that he accomplished, all that he did, but. You think of him always saying there was more to there was more to do, and uh, in in his years in Congress and in his later years, particularly, always being willing um, to to give his time, give his name, give his support to causes that he felt were um, were were just, uh, and and helped push this nation toward um, uh, toward toward better fulfilling its. Uh, its ideals, its founding ideals. Um, he was truly a great 
man. And uh, it, it, it would be, um, uh, of course, um, it, it fitting if the bridge were renamed in his honor. But but we we just more important than that is just to keep his example in mind. He was one of the greatest Americans of our lifetime. Yeah, Eugene, and, and, and you know, the, um, <clears throat> there has been a push, as you know, uh, for a name change of, uh, of this bridge. Uh, Edmund Pettus was a uh, Confederate general, um, a, a KKK leader, and, and, you know, certainly in the environment we're in right now, Black Lives Matter, and as we uh, re-examine uh, some of the, the symbols and uh, before us, obviously this conversation takes on greater significance. Before we uh, go, I want to bring in, if I can, uh, Yamish Alcindor. Uh, one more time, uh, we've, we've watched um, the congressman uh, make this. Right over my head. That's right, it's right over my head. Uh, 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 u